uh, Chad's bullshit hour. <laughs> Take nine. Take second slate. Okay. Second slate. Second slate. Still Chad's. Still Chad's bullshit hour. We'll get one of those expensive ones one of these days. Yo, well, no, 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 no. You, you know, that's it's a great studio. I mean, why do you need that? Yeah, yeah. why do you need this? You know, you know. That's kind of don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. Oh shit. What do you say? Oh shit. Look out. Damn it. You guys are running a pro deal. The fucking Wizard of Oz and yeah. Uh, behind the curtains, that's yeah. no, no, man. No attention. It's a very important Which call I'm waiting for. for. <laughs> I don't even know where my I don't have mine on me, so I'm good. Okay. There you go. Oh geez, look at all these guys. Billy Cobham. Fantastic. You guys you like dig? Them? You don't like them? Dude, about. rules. Oh, okay. I don't know if you like them. I was just making fun. Okay, great. Wow. <coughs> you got any pert? Peart? Yeah, I wrote pert down. Yep. Musicality, you imagination. You got Terry, perfect. Stuart Copeland. Speeding up. He's on okay. Yeah. What does that mean? Just 15, before 16. us or behind us? About one okay. <laughs> Who? Bozy. Well, he's got he's to pack up his yeah. jump. TV. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Terry's I might take him tomorrow. Terry's doing a clinic tour where he's driving his own, and him and a drum tech are driving all those drums. They show up at 8 in the morning, set up all fucking day. Holy shit. Like, Dude. For a drum clinic hard. tour. He's hardcore. Have you seen that drum set, Taylor? You well, gotta check it out. It's dude. in the back, right? Yeah. Still? It's the that biggest drum the set I've. Does it shut up? It's, it's like set up like an organ. There's like 15 8 inch drums all it's, tuned. It's in. Really <laughs> crazy, man. You sit and there's anywhere. 12, you, 15 pedals. There's at least, yeah, it's all pedals. And. My dad's such a bebop, but he was so funny. He took a look at that drum set and he's all. You're gonna hit something. Doom, bat, doom, bat. My dad was hilarious, man. He's like, what are you gonna do with all that? You gotta sit down and play Watts on it. You got Charlie Watts on Terry's kit, right? Did it happen once? On which? Cherry, on Bozio's kit? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. I gotta see that. <laughs> it's kind of funny, man. It's huge. <laughs> I'd love to see a picture of, yeah, Watts behind that. We're gonna be here an hour. We're going, he'll show you his kit. I gotta see it. See you won't believe it, actually. Yeah, it's I met him once. I met him at the NAM show in like 1980. My kit looks like a four piece compared to his kit. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like, like a little jazz exactly. kit. A little like Mr. Mine's a little compact. A little. It's a cocktail. U.S. drag is great. I've got a cocktail kit compared to Bozio. Mm -hmm. He plays the crap out of it, though. Damn. <coughs> Are we rolling? We're, good. we're rolling. Oh, we're rolling. We're rolling. You can just start it off whenever you want. Okay. Today, we've got to my right, Mr. Taylor Hawkins. To my left, Mr. Stephen Perkins. And to his left, Mr. Gary Novak. We all play the drums, in case you didn't figure that one out, here at the Drum Channel. And this is the first show where we're just going to sit down and we're just going to talk about what we do, who we like, who we don't like, what we think is good, what we think is bad. <laughs> Basically, whatever we want to talk about, that's what we're going to talk about. And the cool thing, really, is great, is that we all live in Los Angeles area. We're all very good friends. We know each other. We see each other around. We've all played in groups, probably played together before. I'm, I'm sure that we have. Maybe, I don't know the... We I, haven't played yet. We have not played yet, but yeah. we're going to. <laughs> that would be something you would remember. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I've seen him. Don't worry. I've seen him. And uh, um, basically, just uh, I'm actually, I'll start with talking to my friend Taylor over here about, um, you know, when, what's, what was your first, uh, why did you start playing the drums, Mr. Hawkins? Hmm. What got you into it? Well... I wasn't really good at sports. You weren't a sporty, <laughs> you weren't sporty boy in gym class? No, I was having a hard time You're out in the smoking finding lounge? girlfriends. Yep. You know, yeah. or them finding me. Right. Um, and uh, now how old are you? I was, I was like 10. Oh. And I, but I was getting into music, you know. Like just like the music of the day, rock music and new wave, police and stuff. And my older brother was a... Like, you know. Did he play? An enthusiast. No, he didn't play, really. So you listened to all his records and stuff. Yeah. Yep. And, um, I don't know. My neighbor played drums. And I wanted to play guitar, actually, because that seemed more like a, a, you know, a way to get noticed. Chicks. <laughs> You're right. You know, Chicks go to the scenes <laughs> out front, right? I've noticed yeah. that in my band. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, but I just sat, you know, I... So I plucked around on his guitar. This is my, my neighbor, Kent Cleeter, wherever you are. I haven't seen you in a long time. 
he had a drum set, just weird, crappy drum set. He actually made his own tom stand out of like two by four, and it was just ruling. I mean, I thought it was the best drum set That's in the cool. world. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Kind of cool though. But um, so. <clears throat> and uh, so I would, and he had guitars. He could play a little bit of guitar, but he and he could play a, a little bit of drums too, just sort of basic rock type drumming. Mm. And um. And I would try and play his guitar, and I just seemed like that was going to take a really long time. <laughs> and so <laughs> I quite have the patience. I wanted to be in a band from the second I heard, you know, I got into rock and roll. Yeah. That was just the goal at that point. Okay, yeah. I want to be in a band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I like music. I like the way rock and roll makes me feel, and I like the way music makes me feel. Yeah. And it looks cool, and all those people on my record covers look cool, and yeah. you know, I want to be there. Yeah. And uh, so. I, so I sat down on his drums after a while, and he's like, why don't you just try hitting the drums a little bit? I'm like, I don't want to play drums, man. The drummer, nobody pays attention to the drummer. Okay, in the back. And so, uh, uh, and I, uh, one thing I distinctly remember in his room, he had that drum book w of, uh, who's the guy? Uh, uh, Carmine. Carmine Apathy mm -hmm. with the wood <laughs> drum set, you know? <laughs> the who's this guy? <laughs> who's that guy? Carmine. With the Carmine Apathy on the kick drums, you know, and with the big Re concert Tom Re drum set. Realistic rock, I think. That was it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It was like 1982. Yeah. And um, so, uh, and I sat down on the drums, and he said, here's your basic rock beat, you know? Doosh, gosh, doosh. One, two, three, four. Kick right. drum on one, snare on three, hi hats on all four. Right. Yeah. That's reading music for me. Yeah, <laughs> but, that's um, it. And uh, and I sat down and just did it right away. Right. Automatically. Took to it. Yeah, just like right away. Uh, you know where you know you sit people on the drums and it. It's, it's one of these yeah, deals. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't necessarily uh, tech or uh, uh, like really coordinated because my brother was a good baseball player and stuff, and I just. I didn't really have that in me. I played a little bit of baseball, but I wasn't. I didn't have a major, like ah, he can do anything with his hands kind of guy. You know, mm -hmm. I was not. I was a dork and a klutz. You know, mm -hmm. chubby, yeah. dork, chubby klutz. dork. Klutz. Yeah, but not, um, not getting a lot of girls. No, not at ten. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but um, but I just automatically could do could. Trying so to you, do it. So I mean, I didn't sit down and do, you know, the black page or something, you know. But you played. Still don't. The basic rock beat that the actually basic, you still do today. Which uh, pretty much every song that we play has. Exactly. That beat. I, was say <laughs> I would say 95% of. It's just slower. 98% and faster. Yeah. Slower and faster. Slower and faster. A couple more kick drum. Pattern. Beats here and there, that's you it. know. But that's it. And then, the, and then the next thing, you know, the next day I came over and he taught me. And you can do that. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know. wow. Automatically got basic rock. So you had natural drums. talent. I week. guess so. Or natural coordination. I, I suppose so. And uh, yeah, and so inner I just clock started maybe like a natural inner clock. You just mm -hmm. feel time moving by. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know about that because I still have crappy time. But oh. <laughs> you're feeling your time. Yeah, at my time. Exactly. I've always Tailored done time. my so time. Hey, there is time. that human clock. If you think about someone conducting yeah. a symphony, yeah, he speeds up yeah. and he slows down. And yeah. If you had a, a metronome going with a symphony, I don't think it would breathe as well. Right. You know. Yeah, well, the funny thing there's is, there's something to do with a, a human clock. If I don't think about keeping time, I naturally speed up a little bit. Mm -hmm. If I do think about keeping time, I slow down. <laughs> so, the key, so the key is, <laughs> don't, don't think. think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, even don't. today, when the Foo Fighters try and do a, a track in the studio without a click track, I'm, I'm useless because I'm thinking about the time. Mm. So I always slow down. Right. Trying and to be if too exact. we just go in there and say, let's just do a quick demo, don't pay attention, da 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 da. I go in there, I play it. Uh, a basically pretty steady drum yeah. track that might speed up a little bit, but, but that's you're not okay. Thinking about it. That's but once fine. the red light goes on, if I don't have a click track saying <laughs> it needs to be in here somewhere, yeah. Yeah. I well. will slow down. I mean, I've had a few. Uh, there's, you know, there's like maybe one or two, definitely one on the last record, and maybe one on this record where I didn't use a click. But for the most part, I use clicks in the studio. Anyways, getting back to the story. Yeah. Uh, so you don't have to be great, kids. <laughs> uh, but you can be. But you can be. You can be. You can be. Very modest. Yeah. Yeah. But, but anyway, so yeah, I automatically just started breaking out my records and trying to play along to them. And some were, you know, definitely suited for my 10-year-old one week of playing drum style. I played 
Tonight at the Opera by Queen and, and so you're saying Roger you. Taylor basically has the talent <laughs> of a one week old drumming <laughs> ten year old. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. He's great at translating. Uh, this is I'm not saying that. Kidding, uh, I'm not saying that. He's good, buddy. We're I'm kidding. not saying I was playing it well kidding. either, but I was. No, no, like, no. We all well, understood it. Yeah, I understood yeah. it, and I was playing along to it. Not mm. all of it either. Some of it was obviously yeah. difficult, yeah. but you know that's how I learned. Yeah. Period. And you played along with you and, and playing the records. Yeah. Period. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah, took yeah. you took no I no took formal lessons. No, I've taken a few, you know, and I always hate them. Yeah. Which is not good, you know. And I wish I paid more attention and had a little bit more um, patience, patience, and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff, yeah. you know. Like, because I wish I knew all my rudiments really well and could use them. Because I don't really use rudiments well. I mean, I'm not great. It's fun to hear you say that because when I watch you play, you play tons of stuff. He's crazy. He plays everything in the uh, 26 you know, rooms all the time, all the time. Well, no, you mind. have him now. But, but I listen. But I knew it. Chops, I got. I got, got him chops, just from man. listening to yeah. Neil mm -hmm. Peart. Right. Absolutely. Or Stuart Copeland. Mm -hmm. right. But you do have mad chops. You got a lot of chops. But they're all kind of stolen and fake. I don't learn the real way to do it. Hey, and man, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with it. And there is no real wrong way, man. There's a spirit. Yeah, you yeah. know, there's a technique that Buddy and, and some of the cats and, and Novak has got that technique, and then there's a technique that maybe we can have, you know, that's a little more more self taught Well, yeah, or, or yeah, a little more, you know, caveman. But hey, you know what I mean? Oh, whatever it, works, man. Exactly. Whatever it, it, works. And I think if you think about the the trap kit, it's not that old of an instrument. You yeah, know, they're, they're still trying to figure out what the old. right way to play the damn uh, thing is. Uh, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Think about the drummers today that can pull the ideas of the drum and bass stuff or drum patterns that are written with fingers. Yeah. You know, when that, what they're putting on the drum set now. Is yeah. that the right way? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's yeah. interesting, though, to me. You talk about yeah. technique, you know. It, it's funny when I watch you play, Taylor, because there's, like, times where, you know, everybody's got, like, their different... We were talking, like, different technique or different abilities, but, like, I can't do things that you can do. I just can't do them. No, there's certain things, like keeping up-tempo, super fast, aggressive beats at that kind of volume with all the kicks being a certain volume, like, kind of stiff. Yeah, you, you know, we, we would talk about that. I like, think rock and roll, for the most part, a lot of times, especially when it's fast, should be so somewhat stiff. Kind of, I don't know why. Real straight. I, 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 some should swing, obviously. There's stuff that yeah. should swing, you know. But I, I couldn't but do that if I practiced for a month. Just go, you know, and have everything be real consistent and not light, lighten up. You know, not kind of. I still lighten up, but yeah, that's been a thing that I've been working on, trying to think about a lot when I'm playing live in the Foo Fighters is. Because a lot of our songs are, uh, I guess you would call it a punk rock kind of thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not a big punk rock guy, so I'm not going to say I, that's my thing. You know, but a lot of songs are, you know, up -tempo and, aggressive. and when you're playing up tempo aggressive <coughs> stuff, and you're playing hard, just because I naturally tend to hit the drums way harder than I need to, right. and I don't, it's not, it's really nothing I think about. I wish I didn't sometimes. You know, you'll do stuff like that. And I don't know if you guys have ever come and think about this, but and I actually asked Neil Peart one time I met him about it, and because when you hear Neil Peart play, he'll when he does a something, and I and you do as well. I bug you about it all the time. He'll do a fill down the toms after just playing so hard and aggressive for a whole verse, and all the volumes will be just as loud as his yeah. downbeat on his snare. And that's hard to do, and I'd still fight with that. I'll still be going, oh, gotta do, do, got, you know, mm. to where your fills are not as powerful, pro prominent, mm -hmm. and powerful mm -hmm. as yeah. things. So that's what I'm, mm -hmm. I mean, I, that's a good thing to know. It doesn't matter how fucking good you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in a way. You're always working on stuff. You're always working on stuff. And There's if, a potential, and, yeah. And know. if you, and, and it's good to have some sort of ego. Because to get up on stage in front of people, you have to have some sort of ego. You have to know that you can do it and play. But it's also, you're, uh, and even if you're, I mean, Dennis Chambers, there's always something to work on. You know? yeah, there's yeah. always something to work on. Yeah. And if you don't think there is, then quit. <laughs> then you're, you're a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Dennis Chambers needs to work on. Right. Yeah, but there's but a there's something. There's a, poten yeah, there's, a, there's a potential in his head that he hasn't gotten to. Exactly. He's like, I know I can get to this spot. We all think, well, he's already gotten there. He's thinking, no, he hasn't. The same yeah. with Coltrane. Right. That's why he practiced 18 hours a day. It's like, mm -hmm. Train, the best, most emotional player of all time. 
No, he's still working. Uh, absolutely. He was still working on it until the day the he time. died. You know? Absolutely. And I'm sure Monk and all those cats would do the same thing. And the drummers in the, in the same world. world. Those are true artists, and I think that true artists always need to challenge themselves yeah. to keep moving forward, to yeah. or else. They, I just don't see guys like that thinking, oh, uh, okay, I've, I've, I know everything there is, I've got it now. Of course. Now I'm playing. I mean, you just have to keep trying to get better as a musician, as a songwriter, as a player, as a person, mm -hmm. and all those things come into, you know, what influences you, and you want to keep changing and growing, and I think any real artist or musician yeah. has to do that. So I mean, as a youngster, we're more <coughs> obsessed, we have more time for yeah. our art. Right. Yeah. Now, of course, we have a house and a wife and a car painter. <laughs> and it's I never hard get to practice. practice. It's, it's hard to child. practice that much, yeah. but you child. still have it in you. You still want to, you're obsessed about getting to that point, yeah. and as a, as a youngster, you have all those hours. You know, when I was lucky, and I get to join a marching band. That's where I'm at Navarro. Yeah. There was eight other drummers, yeah, and we're right. all competitive. We all had all the time to reach, you know, to that that point. Yeah. If I was hanging out with eight drummers now every day, I don't know, you know, if that would rub off on me like it did when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have the time for it, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the, the forming yourself as a ten-year-old, listening to records, obsessing about rock beats and stuff, yeah. it's just such a great energy inside yourself like I have a potential I can get to this point you know? well yeah trying to get to that childlike sponge space where you're just sucking it all in and mm -hmm. learning from it I mean you know I, I, I get frustrated all the time trying to play piano or study in bass or something and being 38 and really being bad at something <laughs> is really hard to take. Exactly. You know, you know it ain't reality. Like, yeah, it's your learning like, curve at that age is a lot uh, Exactly man. Absolutely. I mean, getting better at the drums for us now, at this old, decrepit age that we're all at. <laughs> There's those smaller increments. Mm -hmm. it's not Very big small and, and almost virtually unnoticeable. But you know what? I, I, in a way, I disagree because I think my style has changed from 91 where I thought, wow, I found what I sound like. Right. I don't sound like that anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I don't know if I'm better or worse, but I've definitely changed. And I'm yeah. sure the same with you from yeah. 10 years ago. And uh, you, yeah. you know, all of us yeah. are changing. Yeah. Well, so I'm, the curve might be, we might not be learning, but we're evolving. Evolving. You know? No, I and that. I not that. that less is more, but if you listen to Days of Confusion, then listen to Kashmir. Yeah. Ten years apart, yeah, John yeah, Bonham yeah. realized less is more. Yeah, yeah, Doesn't yeah, mean yeah. one is better than the other. Yeah, yeah. You know. I think it's just a, a, a really it's maturing. Yeah. As yeah your a, as interpretation a changes. Exactly. Doesn't I and think how you so. hear things. Yeah. You know. I mean, yeah. you, 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 I always played more when I was younger. Because, exactly. <laughs> but I think because you're a kid, and you, if you can do something do you want to do it all the time all the time <laughs> I, figured I, it out. It needs it, right? I figured it out I figured it out watch now. this and I'm going to do it again wait you didn't hear it that time check this out so when am I going to grow out of this because I still do it Yeah. I learned to well, do this one thing because of drummers that I just have to do every but, night now right. but know? we're show offs you know there's nothing wrong with being show and in having ego there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that well that's the funniest thing yeah. too though I don't know nothing wrong with it just use it in the right way I don't know if you guys use it to your come to this realization but when I was from the time I was you know 10 or 11 when I started got serious about I guess I got serious about playing drums um, serious as I could ever be uh, I thought I was the best fucking drummer in the world you have right to, up there you have right to up think there. that right up there, right up there. <laughs> top five top five <laughs> okay and then when you actually get out there in the see, real world see, and see, see the other guys. and then like hear yourself in the studio for the first time and really start noticing what makes a good drummer. Oh, it's mm -hmm. a trip, isn't it? Then you realize yeah. Yeah. how truly crappy you are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe, maybe I got a little bit of work. You got a little work ahead of me, Kevin.